A 58-year-old teacher, Beatrice Adolo, has been released as the last Ebola patient from a treatment center in Liberia. Beatrice, who hails from the northeastern county of Nimba, near the borders with Guinea and Ivory Coast, lives in Monrovia where she teaches English at a church-run school. A very happy Beatrice is quoted as saying, I am one of the happiest human beings today on earth because it was not easy going through this situation and coming out alive. It symbolizes the significant progress that Liberia has made uh, since February 19. This is the last confirmed live cure Ebola patients from the Chinese ETU that we are celebrating today. This doesn't mean that Ebola is all over in Liberia, but because of the progress we've made, we talked to inform the international community that Liberia is up for business. Liberia still has 106 people being monitored for suspected contact with an Ebola patient, so it's not blue skies yet. Nonetheless, it's pretty close. In Nigeria, nine private higher institutions of learning have been given the go-ahead to operate and have been given their licenses from the Nigerian federal government. The universities received their licenses from the Minister of Education in Nigeria, Malam Ibrahim Shekarao. He warned them against wrongful activities because any university that breaks the rules or is found wanting in any way will be sanctioned. The minister added that, while government appreciates the courage of the proprietors to partner with it on a project of this nature, which is not expected to be for profit, it will not tolerate any breach of the conditions of the approval. Any unwholesome practice or operation outside the provisions of the National Universities Commission's NUC guidelines are unacceptable and will attract appropriate sanctions. The new universities are Augustine University, Lagos, Chrisland University, Ogun State, Christopher University, Ogun State, Hallmark University, Ogun State, King's University, Oshun State, Michael and Cecilia Ibru University, Delta State, Mountaintop University, Ogun State, Ritman University, Aquaibom State, and Summit University, Kwara State. Sankara's family has finally emerged victorious after about 30 years of his death as Burkina Faso's interim government have finally given the go-ahead for the exhumation of the supposed grave of the visionary revolutionary from the country. For the past 30 years, the Sankara family has appealed to the ousted president and Sankara's former best friend, Blaise Compare, to let them confirm if the person in the grave was really their son, but they consistently met a brick wall. They have had doubts for a while that that wasn't really their son in the cemetery in the country's capital and will now be able to confirm or ease their fears. Thomas Sankara, in his four-year tenure in power, doubled the number of children in schools, reduced infant mortality, redistributed land from feudal landlords to peasants, and planted 10 million trees that still help shade Ouagadougou, the country's capital. Tanzania has made history as the first African country to use an indigenous language expressly in educational institutions, especially at school. This is following the country's president's announcement that henceforth, education in Tanzania will have Kiswahili as the sole language of instruction. Currently, public education in Tanzania is bilingual, as it has been since the country's independence from the British in 1961. At primary level, students are taught in Kiswahili with English a part of the curriculum as a language subject. At secondary school level, and all the way up to university, the learning process is reversed with English becoming the medium of instruction. I hope they work out the modalities of this quite properly, or it might become a very dramatic situation. As part of efforts to boost internet connectivity, the Western Cape government in South Africa has approved about 1.2 billion rand to help those living in the area get internet access for next to nothing. The e-learning program will also hook up 1,250 schools to high-speed broadband and Wi-Fi. The initiative is also as a result of statements from government that funds will be spent heavily on e-learning, with schools benefiting from the rollout of tablets and similar devices. According to Ivan Mayer, head of finance in the country, 30 million rand will be set aside to cut red tape, which is also responsible for the crash of many private enterprises. Today on 
are still on the matter, we have this quote about wanting to relocate Nollywood to Asaba. Apart from the fact that most of the best film producers in Nigeria are from this area, we are under pressure from some politicians and powerful businessmen from Delta State who are willing to invest in Nollywood to bring home their sons and daughters that are doing well in the film industry. It is one of the preconditions for the building of the much-anticipated and self-sufficient film village in the States.